worth the effort's first annual State of the School address. In future years, we'll be able to reflect upon the past year's events, discuss the school's current situation, and what's planned for the upcoming year. But since we're new, how about this time we briefly talk about the inspiration for the school, our goals, its development, and maybe I can give you a virtual shop school tour. Then I can describe the cool events coming up this next year. After that, you can decide if we've made good progress and perhaps leave a comment below about how you think we could become better. My personal motivation for opening the school is to continue my teaching career, picking up the slack I've observed in our education system, while also building something I can enjoy doing well past normal retirement age. The idea is simple. A one-room classroom in the middle of an art gallery, both of which being dedicated to the craft of woodworking. An education resource for teens and adults that will also be a source of inspiration, allowing craftsmen to pass along their knowledge and benefit by merchandising their own work. The plan is to have classes that target both locals and those abroad. Community classes will be taught Monday through Thursday and focus on either a specific project or learning a tour technique. This will leave long weekends available for experts to lead marathon three-day classes covering more advanced or popular topics. In my mind, this is the type of retail education you should be finding across the street from every art studio, karate dojo, or athletic club in the country. A place that provides a solid foundation that can benefit everyone while also providing a real springboard of the learning curve for those destined for higher education. Every ballerina on Broadway started playing a tomato in Mrs. Patty's neighborhood dance studio. Where do you think are architects, furniture designers, building innovators, and scientists come from? They need a solid foundation. If we want a society of thinkers, makers, and creators, we need a general knowledge among the populace that will bring to the top the cream of the crop. That's the concept. It's one that requires a large initial investment of time, capital, and resource and it will never return a huge amount of revenue. But it's doable, will benefit the community, elevate society, and promote my belief in critical thinking, problem solving, and innovation. Since traditional business financing is just not available to small ventures like this, we launched utilizing some asset sales, my savings, cashing in my retirement, and lots of help from families and friends. So every decision in the launch phase was truly critical. The most important being where to locate the school. I did a lot of research while I was still working as a high school teacher. Given the entire state of Texas, I studied demographics, geographics, culture, and community information. Research told me the college town of San Marcos, Texas would be best due to its central location in Texas Hill Country and easy commute to the metropolitan areas of Austin, New Bronzeville, and San Antonio. Plus there's a possible tie-in with the university. Then the state restructured its education priorities, forced a more rapid deployment of my dream. At that point, I somewhat wavered. You see, a small college town such as San Marcos does not have enough local population to support the school during its startup years. We'd be dependent on people willing to commute a half hour or so for the local classes. Yet a larger town such as Austin, with its huge homeschool culture and artisan DIY nature, has a population to help assure a successful launch. But its rents for even non-air-conditioned shared warehouses in the worst part of town meant that we'd have to operate at very close to maximum capacity. Plus, Austin is far enough from the other metropolitan areas of Texas Hill Country that people couldn't commute for the long weekend courses daily. I doubt I'll ever know which was the best business decision but I'm confident in the end I made the right one in choosing San Marcos. In San Marcos, I find a little spot a minute's walk from the classic Texas Courthouse Square, which is populated with numerous local floor restaurants and pubs. They also are constantly hosting family-friendly events such as the Texas Swing Festival and weekly artist farmers markets on the grass in the shade of the courthouse's giant live oaks. It is also a short walk from Texas State University and in all its theater, sporting, and art events. Plus, there are spring-fed rivers famous for tubing, a log cabin village, the LBJ Museum, music venues, and a movie theater just across this street or that. In fact, on any given day or weekend, there is some sort of entertainment going on just a short walk 
from the school. And given that this area has been continuously populated by humans longer than any other place in the Americas, you can rest assured the weather will be nice year-round. Even mid-January, you can find locals and students outside enjoying themselves along the spring-fed rivers or on the banks by the university. The warehouse we found was the distribution warehouse for all of Central Texas grocery stores at the turn of the 1900s. Its cracked walls, uneven floors, poor electricals, and leaking roof were evidence of its history, age, and heavy use. But it was close to where I'd eventually like to be, had four walls, a door, and air conditioning. On my budget, I didn't think I could get much better. We moved in in June, and Dad and I immediately started repairing the brick block structure, installing interior walls, spackling, painting, sanding the concrete, and doing electrical. Since the first classes were in to start in July, it was a mad dash to then build the benches and appliances needed. Then every few weeks, I'd finish another bench, acquire another tool, develop more curriculum, and market. Our self-imposed deadline for being able to effectively serve 12 students in a classroom was Christopher Schwartz's Dutch tool chest in November. Over that time, we experimented with different class structures, course offerings, free events, advertising, and the like, while continuing a practice begun a year earlier of working farmers markets, artist markets, fairs, hand tool events, and even street corners to demonstrate and promote woodworking, build a client mailing list, and sell some small items we've made to help support the school. Which brings us to today. So let me give you a brief tour of the school. So it used to be when you walked in, this is what you saw. Now when you walk in, you see a lot of workbenches. We have enough workbenches for 12 students, and along the back wall you'll see a little teacher's nook with whiteboard, digital protectors, TVs for magnifications, a little tool room. In the corner I have some tools I use to help me quickly dimension classroom materials such as a bandsaw, miter saw, thickness planer. I also have some personal power tools like a drill press, sander, and jointer. The workbenches themselves are just an overly simplified version of a mongrelized German, English, French hybrid. They are designed for teaching, not production. I want them to just be able to take a lot of abuse and last several lifetimes. Because the leg vices can be placed on any one of the four legs or interchanged left and right for lefties and righties, you can have up to 48 students in the classroom learning at the same time. So maybe in the future we could have a woodworking club so every meeting we learn something. They're designed to be used with lots of simple, inexpensive, easy to make appliances such as uh, bench hooks and even a little twin screw to help you work out. Again, these are teaching workbenches, not production. Some of the other appliances students make and use are things like peg sizers, clamps, bird cages, bench hooks, twin screws, strokes, and lots of other little knickknacks. Looking back from the teacher's nook, you can get, see a good idea of some of the artwork we have along the back wall that helps me teach some of the teen classes and just how small the school actually is. It's only about 14, 1500 square feet. Just around the corner from the teacher's nook is our tool room and I have a small collection of tools enough to be able to teach. Certain tools like the hand saws I believe I need to have enough so each student has their own but things like some planes like the jointer plane I just need enough for people to share. We have shaping tools, chisels, hand planes, lots of O'Baileys, these Veritas style saws. I really do like, but I do need to purchase some more gents because I found that the kids have a harder time with the pistol grips. I also encourage people to sharpen their own tools here at the school. Sharpening is a lesson that's free to everyone. I believe it's that important. And there's the chisels I'm always having to tune up. Out the window, you can see the rest of the school and get another vantage point. Along the back wall is the artwork, and yes, I do teach woodworking to teens using the periodic table and other artwork that I refer to constantly. Now, every wood shop has a junk room, and behind these curtains is where the sausage is made, where Oz pulls the levers. You walk through here, and it's just total chaos. To the right is a uh, boat art tree I harvested to make a bunch of planes in the future. I got a refrigerator, a lot of excess wood. This is also where I keep a lot of the material I use on my weekend art fairs I go to, the little pop-up shops equipment. And it's just random storage for stuff that I do not use constantly. Yes, it's always going to be a mess, but every shop has a little nook like that. Here's some of the artwork we do sell on the weekends. Bowls, boxes, 
uh, little kitchen items, anything I can demo. So that's what we've built. Now let's talk about how we've been using it. From the get-go, I've approached this at, from three different angles. A retail side where we sold the artwork and the craft that our teachers and other artisans have made. Uh, classes for the local community, really focusing to build up the knowledge in our, our local base. And then hosting international woodworkers who want to come in and teach, utilize the facility to teach long weekend classes to people that come in from all over the state and country. Our local community classes, I divide up into two categories, either a teen or adult class. The teens, I took a unique approach and I am reinforcing academia in woodworking. I am utilizing the periodic table, you know, science, math, biology, social studies, history, uh, geometry, all these kind of other aspects to teach woodworking. It just, just has a reinforcement so the kids know that what they are learning is important. And when we first started, those first three months, Boy, I really thought that was going to take off, especially within the homeschool community and kids coming after school to take classes. It was really going well. I will say this, though. Since school has gotten back in session, uh, those classes have utterly died out. I haven't had a single student enrolled in them. So I'm probably going to be changing that up and instead offering a wide range of classes through the month for the teens. I'm probably only going to offer one class in the evening, in the early evening, so kids can come in after school with their parents uh, throughout the school year. And then during summertime, I'm thinking I would really do an intensive, multiple classes every day, almost like a woodworking camp uh, that they can pick and choose what they want to learn. Uh, I have a feeling that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, even the homeschool community, they aren't coming during the school year. So we're adapting. Uh, the adult classes, they started off slow, but they are slowly building. And I have a think, feeling that's just word of mouth. These last few months, they've slowly been enrolling more and more and more, and it's just been building up. I approach adult classes in two different categories. I either do a project-based class where over a month we build a project like a display case, a table, a dovetailed step stool, or we have a basic class where we actually just build a tool, tool tote, but it's an extremely complicated tool tote that teaches a lot of different uh, techniques. Then I have a series of 12 classes, and this is actually the class, of course, I'm pitching to the university uh, to teach each a semester-long class, uh, where each week we do an entirely separate lesson, uh, like on dovetails, mortise and tenon, or restoring hand planes, using hand planes, all about hand planes. Uh, and each lesson we might do a small project that they can take home, but it's kind of a pay-as-you-go, and that's been pretty successful. People seem to be happy with that. So I will continue those adult classes, and I'm probably going to expand them. For the teen classes that I did have during the daytime, I might do some specialty classes for the retirement community, maybe a little bit more slower pace, so that I can socialize a little bit more uh, and use this as more of a small kind of community, as in, in addition, to using the woodworking skills that they learned as a teen that they could probably pass on to me. Now that leaves Friday through Sunday completely open. And I try to schedule uh, one international woodworker to come in and teach a long weekend class during that time period. Uh, we had Christopher Schwartz come in late November and that was a very successful class. Everyone seemed to be happy. Everyone made good progress. Got a nice little toolbox out of it. Uh, I did have Graham Blackburn and Tom Fitchin coming in earlier in the year, and I apologize to them. I have a feeling my marketing, I'm still learning. I did not do a very good job. Those classes didn't make, and they were polite enough to reschedule. I, that is completely on my shoulders. I am not doing it. I didn't do a very good job getting the word out. So I've stretched my budget to solve that problem. I'm going to have some advertising coming out in magazines, and hopefully you will spread the word. Uh, other people that we have scheduled coming out that I'm really excited. Again, Graham Blackburn is coming in next month. He's doing a long weekend class uh, on just dovetailing. Uh, basically, going from through dovetails all the way up to really advanced dovetails, talking about the tools. But why I think that's kind of cool is I, a lot of these classes that are project-based, a lot of the time you spend in classes just doing re repetitive work, that prepping the stock a little bit, smoothing, that kind of stuff. This is a skills-based class. You are going to get a lot of knowledge in it. Plus the fact, I don't know if you know this, Graham Blackburn, bestseller fiction list. <laughs> Plus the guy spent a lot of time on his own TV show interviewing some of the best people. You know this guy's going to be able to spin a yarn very well. It's going to be a fun, entertaining class. 
I also have Tom Fidgen coming in. Uh, he wrote by hand, uh, uh, made by hand, and the Unplugged Woodshop book that just came out. Uh, he's going to be doing some project later on the year that I'm really excited because if you've seen his videos, he has a lot of techniques that you just won't pick up until you sit next to a master and watch him work, work the wood. Even just how he wiggles a chisel, uh, there's a lot of stuff you pick up through osmosis. I'm really looking excited towards that one. Uh, we also have Bill Anderson. I, that's one of the gentlemen I took a class on who really informed real detailed instruction. Uh, he's going to be coming in and doing an advanced Morrison tenon joint class on one day and then spending the sec two, second two days of the weekend doing his uh, Hogworth bow saw, which is a really advanced, kind of cool concept for a bow saw with taper pins. I'm really liking that one. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, Shannon Rogers, the Renaissance Woodworker, is coming in, and he's going to be doing a hand tool boot camp. If you're just getting into hand tool woodworking, whether you've got a lot of experience with power tools and just want to adapt into it, this is the class for you. Uh, he's condensing his first semester online, plus the fact that being next to him, being able to ask questions on what you don't understand so that he can change his response, it's going to be a great class, awesome learning experience. Plus, you're going to get to take home a lot of appliances that are tuned. That's key. Tuned. It's not just the video you watch and put it together and you don't know if it's working right, quite right. These are going to be tuned uh, to go home and build what you need. Uh, I also have Jeff Miller, the chair maker. This is going to be a really cool one, especially for beginners to advanced woodworkers because he's going he's building a small stool it's just a three-day class so we can't accomplish too much but with the small stool he can show you a lot of the more technical aspects of building a chair uh, i'm looking forward to this just for what i can learn watching him come through the design it's a simple looking stool but take a closer look at it there's a lot of advanced curves and different features on it uh, Mary May, the entire Texas community is excited about her coming in to teach a, a beginning carving class and hopefully she can come back year after year and expand upon what she's been teaching us. I mean, from what I understand, she's one of the best teachers out there, not to mention all the experience and uh, talent she has at carving. And then later in the year, Elia Bizarri is going to come in and I'm, we're going to stretch this. It's going to be a stretch for us to accommodate it, but we're going to try and build a dozen uh, shave horses, steam box, kiln, so that we can do a Windsor chair, a continuous arm Windsor chair in a week. I'm excited about that one and I tell you, a lot of people are ready to jump on that one. We also have uh, George Walker coming in. He's a gentleman that wrote by hand and eye. Uh, this one is going to be a class for beginners and those advanced. This is a design class, and you just don't get access to this kind of information. Uh, you might have been building a lot uh, in the past, and it just hasn't been quite right, or you haven't been totally happy to it. His theories, all the research he's done, will take you to the next level. This is going to be really cool, and I'm looking forward to this one. It help you build and design your own furniture. Those are just some of the people that are coming in. I have a lot more that I'm in negotiating in, but I'm holding off on announcing them until I can figure out my how to market them properly and get the advertising. Plus, I've got to get funds available to advertise. It's kind of a chicken before egg situation. And along those lines, I am experimenting. I'm trying different aspects because I'm not quite sure how to get the school aspect to support itself. I mean, we are in our first year in... Honestly, right now we're struggling a little bit. We are not covering our own bills with the school. Uh, so I'm going to be not only trying some different advertising marketing ag uh, angles, I'm going to be producing a lot more videos for the online content as advertising because that's fairly inexpensive, just takes a lot of time for me. Uh, but uh, we are also going to expand on the retail aspect of the school as fast as I possibly can, building display cases around here so I'm not constantly dusting. I also have a lot of things I'm going to be building for the school that I'll probably build like 20 extras to sell online. Let me show you some of those. I've said that from the get-go that this school would be in the middle of an art gallery dedicated to woodworking and craft. Much like people learn to take, uh, learn painting by going to the museum. You're inspired there and I want people to be inspired to learn. So we will be selling in the upcoming months after I build the display cases 
things like turn bowls. My father does a lot of turn bowls. I like to help him out, and I turn some boxes and stuff like that. My sister does a lot of glass work. And I'll be incorporating stuff like glass clocks and face uh, glass and a lot of the woodwork uh, cases and stuff to sell here. Uh, and we have some other local artisans that will be doing some woodworking to sell here. And I will be posting some of the best of them online in March as I, we get our online store available. I also realized that in order to offset the losses and to expand the teaching side of the business, I've got to diversify. We can't just be teaching hand tools. So in order to raise funds to buy lathes, carving equipment, scroll saws and stuff, tools I can put in the hands of kids and adults, uh, I'm starting a buy a pin or tool to help the school campaign. Uh, we've been turning up pins for years at some of them at art fairs. Now I'm going to be putting a, a set online, all of them made from locally harvested woods. I also, as I build tools for the school, I'll probably make 20 or 30 extras to sell online. Things like bow saws, uh, these grooving planes that I use a lot in box making and cabinet making and stuff, uh, will sell. Uh, spoke chaise, my, our mounts have been selling out. People really like them. I have a batch coming made from uh, Osage Orange as soon as it gets dry enough. Uh, I'm going to do a, a line of smoothing shapes. I like working with wooden planes. I'm going to make a batch for the school and I'll also sell some online. Uh, we'll, we also have some twin screws available. I made a dozen for the school and we have about six or seven left to sell. Uh, all those will be available online and purchasing them will help us buy other equipment so the school can diversify. So that's where we're at. Month nine of a backwards little startup business that created the product and now is having to develop the need for it. Uh, now merchandising a little bit of product to help offset losses for the teaching. Trying to figure out the best way to market, advertise, and expand uh, so that it can, the school can support itself. If you have any ideas, remember, budget zero, please leave us comments on below on how to improve our marketing or the school offerings, anything like that. Uh, we really do appreciate any kind of feedback there. Uh, and remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.